with Connor at Colorado Gators, and we're about to feed a really, really, really cool anaconda. A couple anacondas. Yep. We've Some, got four they're of big them too. In here. They're big guys. So, uh, um, we're unlocking the door. Right. And, I'm gonna uh, grab the food before we go. So yeah, so that what we're, we're, what we're feeding them is we actually have all these uh, all these uh, rabbits. So taste today taste rabbits. the meal is uh, rabbits, and uh, I'll pull her out. She's grabbed on. And she is coiling, she is coiling, she is coiling. There she goes. There she goes. Alright. Are you not gonna eat now? They'll be scared too. Just she's scaring you. Now she's over there, she's still contricting her prey right there. Um, she had a quick grab. She went for that fast. Mm -hmm. You actually see she did let go though. She sneaked up on your butt, Connor. Yep. Alright. Doesn't taste that good anyway, so. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Do you want it? Really? No. He probably won't take it though. That's the issue. Um he's, he's, 99% sure he's not gonna take it from me. That's what I've got the tops for. Okay, so you got a green anaconda in the corner, right? Is that yeah, what there's one there, and it looks like there's one buried under all these rocks. It went and hit himself in there. But those guys tend not to come out and eat. They're not just taking it out of your hand. No, they these do. guys, we put them in tubs to feed them. They don't like to strike and take it like she does. So, and it's seeming like he is not hungry today. But we might be able to come back in a little bit and see if he has calmed down and has decided he's a hungry guy. Oh, that was some kind of strike, but that might be some... That was a, a flinch. Back, a flinch. Kind of thing, yeah. I don't really want it. Come on. Come on. Take the thing. Take the thing. Take the thing. Take the thing. No? Yeah, she's kind of timid. He. He's yeah. All right, what Snake's actually doing now is loosening up the coil a little bit. She's going to search for the head, and then she should begin to swallow. That is a pretty yellow anaconda. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit, but once she locates the head, she'll begin the feeding process. Not to say she couldn't swallow it from the rear end forward, but they usually prefer to swallow it head first. She's checking her coils. Look like she might have bit down on it now. So I guess she's beginning to eat. Yeah, there we go. Alright, she's got it. Alright. Now it could take quite a while in order for them to swallow this, but they're more than capable. You can see she's working away over the head. You can see the ears right there. Yeah, you can see the ears. You know, once a snake begins to feed, they have a lot of determination. So this snake is going to make a 100% effort in swallowing that rabbit. And she shouldn't have any problem. There you go. See how she positions it in her coil. Now normally when these snakes swallow their prey, they actually hold it in their coil all the way until they get to the end. So once she gets to the hindquarters of the animal, it'll look like it's still being held in the coil. She'll just work her head right through there. Maybe pulling it forward a little bit, but they do like to hold on to it. And what's really cool about anacondas, a lot of them will actually swallow underwater. They have a great ability to do that. Actually, we have a video where um, you fed your, uh, yellow, your yellow anaconda, anaconda w which is not quite as big as this one, um, no. but still pretty cool. Um, yeah. And so if you guys want to check out that video, um, it's on the uh, snake feeding playlist. There's a whole playlist of snake feedings, and you can go check out that one. You can see it actually swallow underwater. No yeah. problem. Yep. Swallowed it underwater without drowning. 
doesn't even need to come up for a breath of air. These snakes can actually hold their breath while they're swallowing their prey. Now you can see she's got the head down her throat. Now she's working over the front legs there, holding it in the coil. She's still got a tight grip on it. Loosening up a little bit as she goes along. She looks like an alien right now, as long as that, look at that. Well, it's surreal. Yeah, it's, it's anything it's that's something. It's like so much different than us is so pretty much and distorted the way she's, you know, she can just stretch so much. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, watching like some sea animals eat, like nudibranchs and stuff too. Swallowing fish. <laughs> oh, by the way, these snakes eat fish too. Yeah, so let's talk about their diet in the wild. Well, like any snake uh, in a jungle, or let's just say in a tropical habitat, is more likely to be an opportunist feeder. And that's what these snakes are. So their diet will vary between mammals, birds, reptiles, uh, including crocodilians, which are also reptiles. They'll swallow caiman when they get very large, or small caiman when they're that size. And when green anacondas, when they get really huge, uh, could even swallow a full-grown jaguar. Not often, but it does happen. Now, size differences between a green anaconda and a yellow anaconda like this one. Well, yellow anacondas are generally smaller than green anacondas. They're not the largest on the scale. The green anaconda would probably rank the second largest snake in the world. The reticulated pythons are the biggest, or let's just say the longest, but the anacondas are definitely the heaviest. So these snakes here get very heavy bodies, very thick bodied, and a lot more muscular as well. The word bow itself means powerful. And there she's go. She's I think she's almost got those front legs all the way down her throat there. So now she's just taking a break, positioning herself. And she's moving forward again. There we go. Once it gets about midsection, it slipped down a lot easier and a lot faster. And she's also spinning too. That's kind of interesting when she's literally rotating it. Like right well, now. Well, basically she's kind of keeping that rabbit in a tubular position so she can work her mouth over it very easily. So she uses her body where she's got it coiled to compress the animal in order to do that. So she's actually working that animal you know, in reference to using her body and pushing her mouth over it. You can see it's almost tubular, so, you know. And there you go, you can see how she brings her scales forward and just kind of holds it with the muscles in her neck and then she'll push that mouth forward. She can't really undulate the lower jaw to actually get a lot of gaping to swallow the animal, but she's, I mean, the mouth itself is gaped really wide, but she's got to use those lower teeth on the lower jaw back and forth for anchoring and helping her push. But right now she's mostly using her muscles because she's got a wide spread on that animal. This is really, really cool. And like I said, once it gets a little farther down, and you can see how she uses those muscles to push that mouth forward, because now all she's doing is moving forward, anchoring with the muscles in her neck, and then pushing the mouth forward, holding that animal in her coil, and keeping it cylindrical to actually or let's just say tubular and just pushing it down her throat. You can see how the body bends, anchoring that animal more and more. And look how far her mouth will move up that rabbit. There you go. Almost all the way. 
about two more of those and I guess uh, that rabbit's pretty much down the hatch. Yeah, it looks like she's almost got it. Yep. She's doing really good. Now the difference in it's colors, quite amazing. obviously you have green anacondas and you have yellow anacondas. And uh, why do you think uh, is it one would develop more yellow and one would be green? I mean, are different patterns in terms of like the vegetation uh, they're hiding in, or do you think? No, no. So, well, you know, it could have something to do with environmental environmental conditions or environmental adaptation. But pretty much coming out of the same environment, uh, the camouflage on both species will enable them to blend in very well. Uh, the green anaconda doesn't have uh, as many uh, circular markings on his body as the yellow anaconda. It's more of a circular blotching with one's uh, blotching on the top like we see here and then blotching along the sides. This has more of a repetitious pattern circulation. There's more involved with the pattern on a yellow anaconda. But the yellow color, the yellow tint you see in the pigmentation of the skin um, is primarily uh, due to the genetics of the animal and its evolution. But uh, like I said, both species blend in very well within their environment. And both snakes overlap each other within that environment. So where well, you might find yellow anacondas, there can also be green anacondas. And there's uh, probably a couple different species of yellow anaconda. There we go. It's pretty much down. Now you can see how much the rabbit's expanded in her throat. Yeah, now that she's huge. got it all the way down. Now all she's going to do is push it down there. And she's going to realign her jaw. And put her skin. Uh, or just try to readjust her skin so it's not so stretched out. And she's pretty much, uh, yeah, it looks like she's finished there. She got it. Very cool. There hey. you go. Now she'll hold her head up, probably readjusting her jaw. She might do a head lift there. A lot of times they hold it up. And you might be able to see the trach where the breathing tube is located to the front of the lower jaw. There she goes. Oh. I don't know what she actually has in her mouth there. Is that part of the rabbit? All right, guys. If you like that video, make sure you check out the whole playlist. There's an entire playlist of snake feedings, venomous and constrictors and all kinds of stuff. There's a whole playlist. Go check that out. I'll leave a link right here at the end of this video. Um, and there's lots of other cool stuff, too, out there. Uh, alligators, sharks all kinds of cool stuff go out and follow that um and uh we'll be seeing you soon hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts